All right, all right, all right. A lot of questions about this thing, so might as well as do a little overview slash review of this thing then. So yeah, here you go. This is a Rouse. They call them double bar mowers or double bar sickle mowers because of the bars that come out here and the sections in here. So it's a 540 PTO driven mounts to a ball and you grease up a two inch ball. Each ball has a different rating. Um, you can get them anywhere from 5,000 pounds up to 10,000. It depends how they're made. But we actually make our own hitches too. Some of our other tractors have, we made our own hitch. So it's it's rated for more than 10,000 then because we use this on our mower and on the Rouse Speed Rake too. So it's, don't have to swap out, you know, you just leave leave the ball on when you go from mowing to V-raking. Like I say, it's 540 PTO driven. Two hydraulic remotes, one for the front knife, one for the rear knife. Yeah, quite a few adjustments on here too. Um, you can see this. This part here is the head. Um, this is actually, they have different styles. Uh, they think that they also have hydraulic driven knives. Those I think are the case um, heads. They're actually be red color instead. But the yellow ones are New Holland heads. And really they're, I don't know, they're okay I guess. They used to be better years ago but not as much anymore. But they still got the job done though. Um, they got uh, spring up here. What this spring does, it helps allow the head when it's floating across the ground, if it hits an obstacle here, it allows it to float up and down over obstacles so you don't break anything. And so your knife doesn't trip back as often. I don't know how much I don't know how much pressure goes down on it right now. I'm not even sure. It might be like I don't know, twenty five to to thirty five pounds maybe. I'm not even sure. But but yeah, that's what that spring does. A lot of grease points in here. Um, really, no sealed bearings. Oh, well, no, not no. Maybe the one in there is sealed, but pretty much, you know, grease them off and grease the heads off, and uh, all these moving parts in here. Plus the drive line too. Um, the knuckles and the and the slides. Make sure they're always greased good. And how these knives mount in is right there, a bolt over these two ears here. Bolt goes through here and you just tighten that down pretty tight so it doesn't come loose. Then you gotta check it periodically, make sure it isn't coming loose or else you're gonna cause damage. As in probably break these ears off or ruin this, ruin the, the bushing in here, or even break something else in here the excessive vibration and you know or breaks and wedges somewhere yeah that could possibly break something so it's good to make sure you keep them greased up good and check bolt, bolt torques good to go they are belt driven as you can see on the back the reason why they're belt driven is the knife can stop if it um, hits an object as in like you know debris or junk it gets caught between the guards and the knives here, the belt will just slip then on the pulley here. So you don't break anything then. But also the knife will stop like for really tough grass, damp grass too. Especially like, um, there's a couple tough grasses we have up in North Dakota. One is called, I don't know what the actual native term is, but it's, we call it June grass. It really shoots up in the month of June. And it's really fine, it's really fine grass. It just cuts so tough that if you don't have good knives, they your knives will stop. <laughs> These knives look pretty good yet in here though. Let's 
see it's got the, um, you can pivot the tires. This is in work mode, uh, field mode. Um, the other setting, you pull that lever over, um, is for transport mode. It, what it basically does is swing the tires inward, so this tire lines up with the back tire on the tractor then so that, you know, you can, uh, and it kind of kind of actually narrows the, more in a sense to squeeze through tighter spots in a sense kind of pulls everything over a little bit better makes it easier for transporting the back knife pretty much the same same story too same thing same setup these heads float end sections float too I can lift them up right now pretty easy too so that they float over obstacles Help them to float. You don't break anything. And these end things can actually be set too for height control here. You see the bolt here. You got a couple different settings here. That's actually on the other side of this part. Right there. You can see you can adjust the height to the end here, as well as on here too. You have three settings here too. Back here. We got in the middle. But you also got, but to move these, you also have to loosen uh, all this stuff up here. These bolts here, I think, have to get loosened up because I think they're slotted in here so that you can move that, move that when you need to. So I wonder how much these sections cost again. Uh, we use, well, you can use all sorts of types of sections. They've got a variety of stuff. Um, I forget, I don't know what the grading scale is like over in Europe or something, but um, I think kind of the grading scales is based upon letters of the alphabet from A to G or something like that. Or is there, or is there H or K or something? I don't even know. Those might be specialized ones, but uh, ah, here we go. The chrome ones. Okay, yeah, you can buy chrome-plated sections or just standard. Um, the chrome ones usually cost a buck more per box, usually, um, as you can see here. The chrome ones, got them on sale for $9.90, so that means these guys, the non-chrome ones, would be about 8 bucks or a little less than 9 right now. They used to be cheaper, and of course, there's so much more expensive. Catch them on sale, nine bucks. We use B plus just because of the. We use B plus just because of the aggressive style they have. You see, they're pretty sharp. Really cut thicker stems. They actually, like, um, sometimes you get little willows or shrubs, saplings that grow, and these things just cut them off like nothing. Eh? But you can buy cheaper, or not cheaper ones, uh, different ones, as in they're not as serrated, they're a little bit more smooth, but they require sharpening periodically more often. And they probably do cut grass better, the, uh, um, the not, the non, non serrated ones, they do cut, probably cut finer grasses, but this is what a section looks like after it's been kind of worn off. You can kind of see how much the teeth. I don't know how many acres you can go. It, de it depends a lot on your uh, land, your terrain, what crop you're cutting, how much dirt or if there's any little rocks. It's a whole bunch of stuff. This one actually wore pretty good though. This is a best case scenario what can happen when they wear down. But I'd say at least, at least 200 acres without sharpening them, at least. Um, probably I'd say no more than 400. Um, I'd probably like two to 300 if you want a good cut for like alfalfa and whatnot. But but for like other areas, we usually like to use use knives for like areas, ditches um, where there's a lot of rocks, gravel, so you don't like to chip the new ones as much. So I like to use the use knives more, but. You kind of look. I mean, you kind of look at the front, see how they're wearing. But also look at the back and see how much teeth they're left too. You kind of can tell them. And we do sharpen these every now and then too. So 
once they start getting a little wore down, kind of um, grind down the tops a little bit and grind the guards a little bit to kind of smooth them out, give them a little bit of an edge again. It really sharpens them up a bit to get a bit so that they can go for quite a few more acres again. So let's say, you know, 990 on sale. So let's say this would be about 890 or something. So nine bucks takes 32 or 34 sections for per knife. Now you're probably looking at, we'll, we'll say $30 per knife. So you're looking at $60 total for two brand new knives. Which isn't bad at all for doing anywhere from two to 400 acres. Like I say, but it depends on the crop you're cutting and what your other variables are. It does get the job done. It's a little slower process. Uh, we go between usually four to four and a half miles an hour, depending on the crop and the conditions. Sometimes slower if the crop is really heavy, or I should say not, not the crop, but the trash underneath. There was a lot of residue underneath, old old grass from years before. If it's really thick and heavy, yeah, we gotta go slower as the knives will probably trip back. We usually set them up a little higher then so they don't grab as much then, but. And then of course the guards then. These we change, I don't know how many acres, I don't know, but we usually do it every two years, I think. Change the guards out. Um, basically they get wore down in the, in the inside here where the sections come through they start getting wore down um, then it doesn't cut as good then because well it's not it's not as tight of a clearance in here and it doesn't cut cut as clean that's the thing it does not cut as clean as they get wore down so you got to change them too but not too bad to change though just time consuming but I'll say these these mowers don't break is these they I, I'd argue they uh, they can handle obstacles better uh, is that last year I hit a tree stump that tree we cut off in the springtime I, I completely spaced it out that there was gonna be a sm sm short little stump there it probably only stuck out you know like this far out of the ground just a couple inches completely forgot about it mower hit it I was going over four miles an hour mower hit it Trip back, of course. Knife stopped. I thought maybe I broke something in here, but I came out inspecting it a little bit more. And the only thing I broke was a guard. Guard was busted off. And I guess a, a, a section was busted too, and that guard went, but that's the only thing it did though. So within five minutes, put a new guard on, new section. I was on my way again after that incident. <laughs> So I'd, I'd argue these handle a lot better, which is the reason why we have a bar mower for our operation. I mean, there are a few, I get this question asked a lot. Why don't I have a disc mower, rotary mower, or hay buying, conditioner, crimper, whatever you guys, whatever term you guys want to use. So come on lighting, man, it's cloudy today. Might rain, but uh, yeah, there's a few fields that would work great for it, but Maybe we'd have, I don't know, maybe we have 300 acres where, you know, a rotary cutter would work good. Um, but then we'd, ha but then we have uh, at least, at least 300 acres we usually do of other stuff that uh, cut a uh, rotary cutter, disc cutter, whatever you guys want to call it, won't work very well. Either being uneven terrain, like ditches, pastures that have rocks, for the for the for starters right there. Um, then a lot of piddly areas then, and um, this mower just handles handles all those unusual areas pretty good. Old farmsteads where there's junk, um, debris, gotta watch out for, and probably pick up every now and then, and. So we, we use bar mowers for our operation and using it forever and they get the job done. I mean, well, nothing's cheap nowadays anymore, but uh, 
but the maintenance on them is very cheap ain't much to them if something does break uh, it's not too hard to take apart it's just more or less time consuming but uh, but like I say though you know I'd love to have a rotary cover cutter maybe someday but I'd actually consider having another mower another another double mower instead for operation because there's just a lot of areas where I would not want to use a, a disc vine instead or a, it just caused caused too much damage to it. It wouldn't, wouldn't wouldn't do a very good job and end up spending a lot of money on it just to fix it up. And plus, we also got trouble with mole piles, badger piles, badger holes, muskrat tunnels, and some slewy or low spot areas you got to watch out for that could break an axle on a tractor if you don't see it in time. If you're going too fast, so I mean, even if we would have a disc a disc bind, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to go very fast either. I mean, a lot of land around here is very rough. Um, even I could, comp I could compare it to CRP, the Conservation Reserve Program, if you guys don't know what that is. That is when the government pays you not to disturb your land. Pretty much, you know, plant, you know, you have a grass, put, you know, have it put in the grass or whatever, and, uh, you know, pretty much untouch it and then mow it, you know, they, they, of course you can mow it every, was it, three or four years, depends on what your program is, um, but, but it's pretty much, you know, you don't touch it any otherwise then. Um, it, and CRP land gets extremely rough because, as I stated, mow piles, badger holes, badger piles, ant piles, it just starts stacking up. And, I mean, even on our, some of our alfalfa fields that are, you know, gets they get bad after a couple of years some of them some of them aren't too bad there's just maybe more or less a couple a couple spots in that field but then there's other fields where it's just all over <laughs> and like compared to a crp field that's not been touched for 10 years just how you're just constantly bouncing back and forth and back and forth and back and forth um so i wouldn't be able to go nine miles an hour down a, a field with uh with a uh, uh, disc mower, but maybe in a maybe in a couple areas though I could be able to I would go be able to go flying down the field. There's a couple spots I know of that are pretty smooth, but most of our fields are pretty rough. You know you wouldn't be making any headway anyways. And yeah, I could buy a three point mounted one. You know what are what do they make them eight to ten feet ones or whatever they are again. Uh, but like I said, <laughs> wouldn't be able to go fast anyways. I'd rather have a sixteen foot bar mower than, you know, a uh, 8 or 10 foot disc mower. I mean, you're going pretty much going to probably go the same speed anyways, so it's like no point either, so but you know, that's just the way it is. Plus it's another piece of equipment to buy, upkeep, overhead expenses, and uh, storage. So, don't really want to consider that right now. I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather have another bar mower for for what we do. As long as we have two operators going at a time, too, you know, it makes it more worthwhile. Then um, there are other mowers, bar mowers out there that are pretty common. One being Rouse. Another one around here is Kosh. They're green and black colored. They're more. They got they got the white. They got a really, you guys can look them up, Kosh mowers. They got a really big white tube. It's all hydraulic driven. Um, it's own, its own system. It's PTO driven yet, but the entire system is hydraulic driven, driven though on the mower. Uh, so that's another mower. Um, we have considered getting Koshes, but, uh, but then we have to have parts for two mowers in. So if we were to get another mower, it would probably be another Rouse mower. Unless, you know, we sell off this mower we currently have and then get two Kosh mowers in but but then we do have we do have spare parts for these mowers right now that we've accumulated over the years and you know it's kind of like well just keep sticking with them I know they've gotten a, well I should say Rouse it's the Rouse frame on here is not the problem really it's uh the New Holland heads 
have really cheaped down a lot is the problem. Over the past couple decades, we've we've noticed that you know they've gotten a little bit cheaper over the years. Not not as good built anymore. I mean, they used to be the they used to be you know the main one of the main selling points on here were the New Holland heads really good. Now it's just kind of like meh. Now you're buying it for the Rouse brand now. That's pretty much what it is. So, but yeah, so there's the bar mower and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit here. What the heck? So, yeah, that's the reason why we don't have a disc mower. And uh, a lot of other ranchers in the area will tell you the same thing too. I mean, there are, I do see some, some people do have them around here. They do use them on their alfalfa. You know, you see them, you see them scattered throughout. Um, I actually, there's actually custom, um, um, custom cutters out there, businesses that you, know, you can hire them. They have self-propelled ones. I've seen, one guy has a Challenger. I see. I think one actually. I think there's a John Deere in the area too. But you know, and then you see New Holland pole types then. And, but most of the time, though, I usually all, all the ranches around here have bar mowers. Either at least one. You know, like for us, we get by with one just fine. Just you know, mowers usually going all the time. Um, but uh, but then there's a lot of guys you see around here that have two, three, or four bar mowers going. And that's what most people use around here, I guess, because of the because of the terrain. That's about it. So and with the mower too, with the rocks. It handles it a little bit better. It kind of floats over rocks, you know, the ones that are lower. Or I can just use the hydraulics and uh, lift the knives up to clear an obstacle. So no big deal really there. So. And also trees too. Sometimes there's tree branches that get blown over in the field, and I I don't know. I mean, they probably all have their perks and everything, but I like to see a disc mower go over a tree branch. This thing can handle it no problem really no damage at all really I mean, we've cut down little shrubs too with it too doesn't have a problem with it <laughs> as long as they're not too thick maybe you know this far is I'd say that's big enough where the knife might get caught but you know go slow through them then it'll just snip them right off and so I don't think we've really broken sections either with it plus also for um, ditches, uneven ground. Um, you know, well, ditch is one thing, but any other uneven ground gullies or something, but um, I could put my knives in a float and not have to worry about them. They'll follow the contours of the ground the best they can. Um, then, like for ditches, I can have my front knife in float, so I have to worry about it then, but then my back knife I can regulate then to keep it away from the gravel and whatnot, so it all works out there pretty well. That's why we have that because we do a lot of a lot of ditches highway and gravel in our area yeah hope I don't have to answer those questions anymore <laughs> why we don't have a disc mower so but you can see the clouds over there a little bit off in the distance <laughs> so yeah so thanks for watching guys please comment rate and subscribe yeah there you go the double bar mower Gets the job done. Works good.